Hello everyone. Hope you're all doing well. Let me know if the voice and resolution is okay. And um, yeah, I guess everything is okay. Is it? Feedback, feedback. <laughs> All right, good. Thank you for that to Kaz Kowalski. And Aman says weak. What do you mean weak? Kowalski says it's okay. So could you guys clarify, is it good or weak or what? what is weak? Aman, make complete sentence. <laughs> Well, I'll go with Kowalski. <laughs> he says it's fine, so. Thank you very much. Lucas, yeah, okay, all right. I couldn't read the first one. It was like a different L. All right, so uh, let's see who we have here. Sally, Sally you. Barry says, hello, sir. It's been a long time. I guess so, because I don't remember the name. <laughs> and let me know your age, gender, where you're tuning in from, if you will. Aman says, hey, Miran, 21 male, India. Thank you for that. Ali loves Japan. Oh, yeah, okay. I've heard that before. You've been here before. It says, hi, Mehran, 26-year-old female from Romania. Yes. I'm just going through a breakup, and I'm a bit scared that from now on, it will be harder to find someone else. Most girls of my age are already engaged. Well, if that's how you feel at age 26 then I should might as well feel like a dinosaur and go die. Because <laughs> on top of the fact that I have high standards, my nose is a little bit turned up. <laughs> Plus all the fact that you don't socialize so much anymore the way the world is. Plus the fact that now <laughs> you can't find any unvaccinated girls. <laughs> so might as well I go die. <laughs> That's the train of thoughts that you have. <laughs> you, you have no choice in life but being hopeful <laughs> because that's the only thing that they cannot take away from you. No matter if it's the government or if it's events of life, you're in charge of that. You have a choice. It's on you. You can choose to be miserable and hopeless and crying and sad and thinking that, oh, things will be like this always, forever. Why? Because it is now. Uh, how do you know what tomorrow will bring? I don't, but because it is now, so I feel it's all going to be miserable. How, how do you go about that? It's no difference than having a, I don't know, plum tree, peach tree, and it's maybe uh, six months old, 
And he said, well, there's no peach this season, so there'll never be a peach. How do you know? Wait till the season changes. Wait till it's one year old. You'll see peaches and plums on that tree. You don't see it now because it's in maturity. It's in on its way. It's preparing. But just because you don't see it now doesn't mean this tree will not have peach. We don't know what the future holds and what the future brings, but we know that this is not going to be the same time and space all the time. And things change and develop in different time and spaces. And you can't be in all these different time and spaces at the same time. You're here at this point. Nothing is happening. There's no peach on the tree. Fair enough. But coming out saying that there will never be a peach on the tree, that's stupid. And just because I can't see it now, therefore I can't imagine it having any peach on this tree. Therefore, because I can't imagine it, because I can't see it, because there is no guarantee, nobody tells me that for sure it's there, it's going to be there, then I'm just going to choose to be hopeless. Really? So you're going to come up with a conclusion of choosing to be hopeless all throughout this journey just because this moment, what you want is not there. Oh, that's really not a way that humanity really got from uh, a million years ago to this uh, um, stage of um, advancement in sciences and technologies. And yes, of course, we were more stupid than the, when we look at the governments, what they're doing, what they're pushing, putting us through. Yeah, they're dumb and stupid now. But in many other um, aspects, we have developed. So we would have never developed if we would be thinking hopelessly just because at a certain time things are grim life is a river you cannot know what you will see throughout this flow of a river you can only see the bank that you're passing by but you have no way to know what other things you will encounter as you further your journey down the river, the banks will have different things, different trees, different animals, different sunlights, different environments, different shrubberies, different happenings. But you can't know that while you're traveling and you're traveling this bank. That's what it was here, but it won't be the same over there. That is going to be there when you get to it and you will know what's there, but it's not going to be the same all the time. There's a chance everything will change all the time. And you know from the million years ago, things have changed. That's why we're here. If they hadn't, we wouldn't be here. We would still be there in caves. So you can bank on it that the way things are today is like it was for you, for humanity, a million years ago. It also will change. That's the way of the river. Things change. Maybe sometimes to better, maybe sometimes not to better. But there's always hope that things won't be as it is today. It's a reasonable assumption. And you got to go with the reasonable assumptions. Otherwise, there is no accuracy. There is no guarantees how things will be, always will be good. Let's say you, you were, you know, this relationship that you broke up, it didn't break up. What guarantee do you have that it would have stayed as good as you expected to? Maybe it would have broken up someday. So if things are good for you, it's no guarantee that it will be. Things are bad for you, it's no guarantee that it will continue to be bad. So it's all your choice that you choose to be hopeful and strive for better and betterment and making your life advance and better and grow, or you choose to be gloomy. It's not a fact what you feel, it's gonna how it's going to be in the future. It's your choice. Do you want to choose how you feel is going to be the way you feel tomorrow and the day after and for years to come? It's your choice. It's not a fact. That's how it's going to be because that's how it is. So if you get that out of your head, that there is no decree that this will be because it is. No. As long as you understand that and believe in the way of the river, life moving, then you will be hopeful naturally by this philosophy, which is true in the old times to now. 
and for the future. Like as shitty as the governments are dealing with people and the globalists and all that garbage, then forced vaccination and everything else that is being pounded on us, they will eventually, the criminality will come out of it. The world will know it as they are now finding out. And all these criminals eventually we put, put aside. That's what we should hope for. Not to believe that that's how it's going to be because that's how they want it to be. That's how they say it. In that way, we are defeated. Hope is what makes you ready to strive forward and bring what you want to bring to fruition. Not what being told that this is how it's going to be. Says who? Same thing with you. You're miserable now. You think that's how it's going to be? Says who? Only your brain. You're not your brain and brain is not you. So go on, live your life. Hopefully, enjoy your life. Do your things, your work and everything else and enjoy whatever it is. Create new mechanical processes for you, yourself. The things you want to learn, the things you want to do. People, new people you want to meet. And continue on to create a new routine with these mechanical processes that you do during the day. And then it will create a new order for you. And that new order will give you hope. And your mind will settle in that new order in the actuality of your life. And you will not keep going to the memory. So you won't feel miserable. You will be hopeful because it is up to you to build what you want to build in this life. It's not going to be given to you. It's not going to be handed out to you. Oh, you're sad. So here is a boyfriend. Oh, you're sad. So here is a girlfriend. No. You got to build yourself, be happy, go to the gym, get exercise, do your work, make money, be feeling good about yourself, and that will exude outwardly and will attract new candidates. That's how you build rather than feeling like this. Yeah, nobody can win a race when you, from the start, you say, Well, I don't know if I can finish this race. I don't know if I can win. Well, you know, might as well I sit here because I'm not going to win anyhow. Well, obviously, everybody will run and finish the the course and you're still sitting there thinking should i have ran <laughs> i don't think i have a chance well let the chance tell you if you had it or not let the events tell you so you make the effort forget about the outcome just make the effort start running and you'll see if you win or not right now the same live your life be happy and you'll see if you're going to be sad or not but choose to be happy right now that things are not that good seemingly but it will come because you started it with the right energy. Hope that is helpful to you. And we have... <laughs> All right, I'm on. Good that you like peaches. <laughs> Lucas, 34, male from Poland. So it's good to hear from you, Mehran. Your wisdom helped me a lot through many tough times. Now I'm a single and found peace with myself. It's fine to be alone for a while. Oh, Lucas, you're in Poland, a land of beautiful women. <laughs> Impossible. I would have loved to have a Polish girlfriend. They are just beautiful wonderful, clean, feminine. So you have nothing to worry about. You are where everybody wants to end up. <laughs> so that's what you're going for. So even if you're alone for now, that's fine. Take a break. But always have your radar working. <laughs> There's always someone amazing just around the corner. It's just that the corner is a little bit further than it should be. <laughs> it's not this corner, maybe the next corner. Um, Chip says, good evening, Mary, and happy Saturday, everybody. And Chip, or Chip, <laughs> let us know your age, gender, where you're tuning in from. And Chip says, click the, right, uh, the like button, give him some love. Yes, there we go. <laughs> and Perzibal, Perzibal. Hmm, I wonder if that has anything to do with Persia. Perzibal. Your ball from Persia? <laughs> says, I know I can feel urges or just thinking that I want to do something without anxiety. 
But I would like to add that without it, it's really hard telling that you don't want to do it. I'm not sure what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> First of all, I need to know your age, gender, and where you're tuning in from. Secondly, I want to know what's the topic? What are you talking about? Uh, it's ambiguous. So in order to get rid of the anxiety, if that's the problem, I want you to all, perhaps all of you, including me, a double breed using the second version of our breathing system, um, parafacial nuclei, which allows you to manipulate your breathing system. So instead of breathing normally one up, one down, you just do a double breathe up, like, and then hold a few seconds and let it out from your mouth or nose gently. And then when it's ended, breathe normally. See how it feels. So let's do it together. Breathe normally. And you can redo one more time. Double breathe. One on top of the other. Normally, one of the most important things about this is not even it calms you down, settles you down. If you understand that most anxieties, if not all, they're all thought driven. Or created by thoughts. We didn't have anxieties 40,000 years ago because we didn't have this brain that could think or speak. Everything was instinctive. So unless there was a danger, there was no anxiety. A real danger, physical. So because it's all thought-based anxiety, when you do this exercise, if you notice... If you didn't do it one more time, you'll notice. While you're doing it, at the end when it finished, you realize there was no thoughts. During that exercise, there was no thoughts. And that's what the brain wants. That's what you want the brain to do. Have no thoughts. To give you a breather. To be yourself without manipulation of the brain to reset everything and you will see that the emptiness of the brain is where you calm down and the threats will go away because all these threats are thought born thought based most of them but not all are fictitious illusional virtual and when you go through this exercise and get thoughts naturally disappear, you reset. Anxiety goes away, fear goes away, and you're ready to go to whatever it is you want to accomplish. So don't forget, that's a secret weapon, a ninja weapon that you always have at your disposal. You can do two, three, four times Whenever, any time of the day or night you wish to do it, it will take away all that is bugging you as far as thoughts are concerned, because that is what the real trouble is. Thoughts are the roots of all problems. So, hope that will help you. Prezibal, uh, as far as the anxiety is concerned. Champion King says, Champion King, listen guys, what's wrong with you all? We said we have a protocol. 
age, gender, where you're tuning in from. I got to know that. I got to know how old you are. I got to know how to address you. I got to know where you're tuning in from. Maybe it helps me with a little cultural background. So, Champion King, I'll go to the next question until you kindly add that. Tia Tia says, female, 19 UAE. See, that's all we want. F19 UAE. Female, 19 UAE. Or M22, whatever it is, and wherever. France, Japan. Tia Tia says, Maren, I guess you are sick from hearing my story <laughs> in your live chats. Anyway, Maren, I feel it's being harder than ever. I'm sick of this feeling of pain just because my ex-girlfriend will get married. So what's your option? You want to be miserable? Because she's going to get married. If she's going to get married, what's left for you? Either move on or sit, sob, and rot. Which is your choice? You know, we all have choice. We live with our vetoes and choices. Not everything we want in life is according to our values. Most things are not. That's why we don't live by what's being suggested from out there or what even is being suggested by our own brain. We live by our vetoes and choices. The brain can say anything it wants to say, intrusive or suggestion or images or thoughts or whatever. Other people can try to influence us in any way, shape, or form. Governments could try to do that, which they have for the past three years. But we all have one thing they cannot take away from us and they cannot influence. Your vetoes and choices, regardless of what your brain tries to manipulate you with or governments or other people, you are the only one who can veto it or choose it. So now your girlfriend is going to get married. That's gonna. That's her decision. Hmm? So, what are you gonna do? Option one: sit down, sulk, and die in sadness, be lonely, cry, or say, so, "Well, the duration of what it was, it was nice, but it's not now for whatever reason, and I have a choice." Is it going to serve me well if I feel and think sad and thinking about her all the time while she's having her life? Or I move on. Set out to find, set sail to find another girl. What is your choice? It's not mandated for you to be sad. You choose to be sad and think of her more important than your life and your happiness that she's decided somewhere, somewhere, somehow, is contrary to what you would have liked her to choose, or you're going to say, look, that's her choice, and my choice would be to be happy, and I can't be happy by sitting here and being sad because I don't have her. I'm just going to go on and find another girlfriend. And when it happens, great. If it doesn't happen, I still try. Because better than sitting and, you know, losing all my chances in life at work and study or whatever it is, just to sob after, okay, she left, okay, the hell with her. If she can go, you can go. She's got nothing over you. Another human being. She got to get up, clean up, go to the bathroom, do her thing and come out. She's not a god. That's what her preference was to go and do what she's doing. You choose to make your life happy and understand this is the fact of the life and then go on. Build another. Choose. Choose. You shouldn't be a victim to other people's decisions or circumstances of this sort. Some things we don't have power against it or somehow or health or accidents, whatnot. But these are the things you have. You can have control on it, according to your vetoes and choices. So stop being a pussycat. The hell with her. 
You're the most important person in your life, not her. Cherish yourself. Head high, strong. Go to gym, get fit. If you're not, if you are, get fitter. Dress nice and have a good attitude. Go out and have confidence. Love yourself and say, I deserve better. I deserve someone who wants to be with me. I don't want to have anything to do with someone who doesn't choose me or doesn't want to be with me. Whatever it was, that was, and that was good. Now it's not, the hell with it. I go on. That's the only thing you can do. JL says, hello. Hello, JL. Hey, gender, where are you tuning in from? Please. Uh-huh. User 22, oh, that is uh, Christoph from Germany. Yeah, <laughs> hello there. Clay says, mail 24 France. Bonsoir, monsieur. Comment ça va aujourd'hui? Au ce soir. <laughs> it's been six months, he says, that my ex left me straight to another guy. My emotions are never stable since. Why? Why? As if your emotions are some animal out there that is on its own. You choose. I know I'm not dummy. I know it's difficult because your emotion is being influenced by your desire for pleasure, by your ego. I understand that. But... You are the master. You are the master of your existence. You're the most important person in life. You must say, I am more important than my emotions. I don't make decisions or be manipulated by my emotions. I am the entity, not my emotions. Emotions is a fragment of me. Therefore, I see the situation. I see the fact that I'm still thinking about something that I don't have. That's why my emotion is not fulfilled. That's why it gives me misery. So I leave this emotion to be where it is, but I move on to find another pleasure, another thing that I could desire for and build another happier moments for myself. Then emotions will follow me. I move forward. My emotion will follow me based on what I will find interesting to me and enticing to me then as I move forward. If I don't, I'll be stuck to my emotion that the emotion doesn't have any brain or any desire or any activity in its functioning to do anything for me. I'll be just sitting here for some dumb emotion that has no ability to advance or grow or do anything or move on. It's not a dynamic thing, emotion, in this case. It's just sitting. You, on the other hand, have all the power to make changes. Subject to what you do, emotions appear. When you follow the emotion, you're lost. You're not in control. Move on forward and let the emotions follow you based on what you find interesting. Not stick with emotion and expecting things to change while you're sitting around with the emotion, which is not mobile. Vous comprenez? And he says, I'm living alone. Moi aussi. <laughs> That's the beauty of it. And we've lived alone so long that it's difficult to give it all up just for... <laughs> but it will be found. You're 24 years old. Right now, you can love a tree if it smiles at you. So don't worry. Whoever it is that left you at this age, it's not a consequence. <laughs> You're 24 years old. <laughs> You have no idea how many other girlfriends you will have. 
<laughs> Even though you think, oh, this was the best, this was the last, I never want anybody else. This is the only one I want. You don't. You'll find better and better as you move on. Life is a river. Keep flowing with the river onwards. Different banks will present you different opportunities as you pass by. Don't think this what you pass, these trees, animals, and opportunities, and this bank of the ashore, this river, was all and was the best of what the river could show you. River being life. So much more out there. And you will see as you continue your journey down this river. So don't lose hope. She was just another girl, 24 years old. What do you think she's accomplished in this world that she's the oh, best of the best? No. You haven't seen anything. That's why she, to you, was best of the best. And at that age, honestly, anything that smiles at you and lays beside you and she's got nice boobs and nice legs, you think, oh, she's the wife I will always dreamed of. No, it's just your hormones. So understand that it's not what you're feeling. It's not because she was all the best that they could be for you. It's because that's the stage you are. You will love anything that smiles at you. So endure and move on. Just keep moving on, you know? So what? In soccer matches, when another team scores, what are you, the game over's over? Everybody stop playing? Well, they scored, you know. So what? It's one score. Go on and score another. And then another. And it'll be two to one. Then you'll say, hey, hey, I don't care about that one. But if you don't score, you constantly think about, oh, they scored one. We're one behind. Go score and then another. You're 24 years old. It will come even if you don't try. So relax. Just understand. There are better things awaits you. And unless this would have finished, you would not have ever had the chance to meet those better things that awaits you. If this was the best, it would have stayed. Because it hasn't, that means it was the most compatible, the best opportunity you could ever had. If it was, it would have still been together. So if it's not, that's the way of the river. It had to be. So you'd have an opportunity to find something that is out there waiting for you. Keep on going. Ali. All right. It says, I don't have friends. I'm always alone. That's your choice. Find friends. I don't have friends. What, are, what do you mean? Or well, if you socialize and then you find somebody, you don't try to make friends. If it's, if they're uh, suitable, if they meet your requirements or standards, if they're, you know, good people, you get get to know. Maybe you join a badminton in a community center or a soccer team or some activity, chess club, something. Chess club mostly are guys anyhow, but <laughs> uh, some activities, bowling, whatever, to create that activities that would allow you to meet new people events volunteer work some way to meet people then you will see you will find friends but if you sit in your home and say well oh, i don't find friends and all you know video game or on net nothing happens and he says uh, friends she's getting uh, alone why she's getting plowed in bed so what that's her age she wants to be with another guy and she wants to have sex so what she's not the last woman on earth she's not the most beautiful one she's not the most compatible one at this age you hardly know who you are how do you know you that's the woman that you always wanted or you will always want no be realistic that was its duration, and it's finished. Now move on. You learn something. You make yourself stronger, better, and you have more standards and what you're looking for, and then you go on to the next one. 25, 26, age 27. Eventually, by age 28, 29, 30, you kind of know yourself. That's the time you kind of know what kind of girl you really should have. You've had a job. You've got some money. You've got a career. 31, 32 you have a good idea what the girl should be aesthetically and in her heart and her values and mentally. Right now, it's just fornication. <laughs> it's all sex and hormones. 
There's nothing else that you can really rely on. Oh, that was the best girl. How? Huh? You hardly know who you are. <laughs> so, relax. Ali, Pesel, Pesel boy, what is it? Uh, I forgot the expression. That was a funny one. Anyhow, <laughs> just tell her the gage. Il n'y a pas, il n'y a pas de pensi. <laughs> and move on, move on. She's not the angel of the world. Come on. <laughs> Dégage, il n'y a pas de pain ici. <laughs> I think that's the way. <laughs> All right. Now, Clay says, I work seven hours a day plus four hours on my side business. But once I'm not occupied, my mind go to the memory. So what? That's fine. Go to the memory. But that's why you miss her, because you go into the memory. Because as I explained before, Certain things you used to do during the day was with her. And that had created your mechanical process, the things that you would do. And those things that you would do during the day with her, which she was included, was made by two. And that would create a routine. And that routine created an order. And the mind, I use mind and brain in the same way right now, but mind and brain is different. Just for this discussion. The mind finds security in the order of life. And that order is broken because she's not with you. And that order was made by two people, you and her, doing things. And because the order is not there, the mind can't find security. But mind wants security, just what your physical entity wants security. So the mind cannot find security because it finds security in the order. And the order is broken. So it says, I still want security. Where can I find it? The mind says, ah, I know the memory. Memory has everything as it used to be. It's virtual world, but I, mind says, I'm also virtual. So to me, memory is actuality. So it goes to the memory, finds the order as it was, you know, when you were with the girl, all the memory. And it feels secure. And it feels good. And it wants to stay there. That's why you keep wanting to go in the memory, because the mind finds security in the memory. Because in the memory, there is an order. That order, because the memory is there the order is also is felt by the by the mind being in the memory but while you're there and feeling safe and secure she's there in the memory and when she's there it automatically triggers the prerequisite file that is necessary for desire to be born and this prerequisites were met when you were with her and the desire had been born and those prerequisites that was met is recorded in the memory in a file so when you when the brain is in the memory enjoying the order of the memory and you're feeling secure she's also in the memory so automatically when you see her in the memory the trigger of the file that has the prerequisites for desire to be born is on and then you think oh all the prerequisites for desire to be born about this girl just was accomplished no it wasn't just it was done before but your brain can't tell the difference it feels it's refreshed so it desires her again that's why you constantly think that she's the only one i want her because you're constantly in the memory so the key is get out of the memory how create new things that you want to be en en engaged with new experiences new things you want to learn new people you want to meet and all these will create new mechanical processes, new things that you do during the day with finding these new activities, new people, new things you want to learn and accomplish, new projects. All of that creates new mechanical process, which creates new routine, which creates new order. And when you have created a new order, the brain, the mind doesn't need to go into the memory to find safety and security through the order that is recorded in there. It says there's an order here now. I can find security in this actuality, in this order that lives in actuality, in his life today, now, in present moment. And when it's there, it's no longer seeing her, no longer constantly remembering her because it's not in the memory anymore and she doesn't exist outside of the memory in the actual life. So your key is to create a new routine, 
new order so the mind comes out of the memory and stays with you out in the actuality of life and then you will be ready to move on further and further and things will become much easier and you will find another girl and things will all vanish <sighs> and says i tried everything but it's really tough we were together for five years and she jumped after one week. Yeah, that's how it is. Some girls are like that. And that's the human psyche and human needs and insecurities and shortcomings. Whatever it is, the fact that she's done that, she's no longer qualified to be with you. Because you, how do how would you want a girl that does this sort of thing? You want a girl who doesn't want to do these things, want to be with you. And she, since she hasn't, she no longer qualifies. So unwant her, unqualify her, and let her go because she's no longer qualified to be desired by you. If she's not with you, she doesn't deserve your attention and your desire. So now, do what I asked you, and you'll be fine. Tia Tia says, Mehran, I will continue here. My ex showed me new pictures of her and one picture of her body. I feel seeing her again after deleting her pictures devastated me. She became very beautiful and that hurts me more. Yeah, but she's not the only beautiful one. You know, there's so many beautiful women on this earth, I couldn't have them. Rackle well, since my youth, teenage life, I had a crush on her because she's the most beautiful, one of the most beautiful women on earth. It's different time, different person, different life. I couldn't know her. I couldn't. So what do you do? You keep sobbing? No, okay. You recognize she's one of the most beautiful girls. Okay, it would be lovely if I could know her, if she would pay attention to me. I was a young boy, right? And all through her life, she was like 55. She was still gorgeous. And just recently, she passed away. I never knew her, right? But that's the fact of life. You can't say everyone who's beautiful, I got to have her. I got to be with her. Not necessarily, but you can appreciate, okay, she is beautiful, and I enjoy just seeing that, you know, and I enjoy that she was with me. That's great. So that's what you can feel. But now things change. She's somewhere else, and don't envy. Just move on. If she's not giving it to you, it doesn't worth worrying about it. You know, remember what I always shared with you guys for one uh, certain challenge I had in life, and I was sad about a you know, a relationship or something. And my father, that was years ago. My father said something that it always sat on my heart and I never forget. My father said, God bless his soul. Hi, Dad. My father said, if this wheel doesn't turn for me, I don't care if it turns at all. If this wheel doesn't turn for you, you shouldn't care if it turns at all. In other words, it doesn't matter how delicious a dish is made. If it's not put in front of you, if it's not for you, I don't care how delicious it is. It's not for me. It's on some other table. So be it. If this thing in life is not serving me, is not for me, is not inviting me, it's not made for me it's not offered to me i don't care how wonderful it is if that car is a supercharged and it's got an engine an amazing speed okay i can appreciate it but if it's not made for me it's not mine it doesn't make me it doesn't make sense for me to constantly oh i wish i had it no you move on if this wheel doesn't turn for me i don't care if it turns at all that's how you should feel about her. She was with you for a while. If she doesn't give you what you expect, then who cares how beautiful she is? Okay, she's beautiful. So what? I won't desire what is not offered to me. I won't desire what is not willing to be mine. And if I desire it, I enjoy the desire, but I will tell my desire that, look, that's beautiful, but we will go somewhere that we are invited that's your principle. You're not invited. You don't want to be there. Have some honor. Have some roots. 
Hmm? Have some respect for yourself. I don't care how beautiful she is. If she's not giving it to you, if she's not for you, you don't give a shit how beautiful she is. You appreciate it, wish her well, and go on about your life. Don't go where you're not invited. And nothing and nobody warts your attention if they're not giving you the attention that you desire and you deserve. Have some gusto, have some roots, and have some respect for yourself. Stop mooning. The more you feel this way, the weaker you become, the stronger that person becomes. While in reality, she's not. It's only your desire that wants her. Well, want somebody else. You think she's the only one in this world? Yeah. Nobody's prettier than her, better than her. It's just because it's not available for you right now. That's all. The hell with her. Let her go. And if she's keeping sending her naked picture for you, just tell her what the fuck you're doing. I don't want to hear from you. Or just block her. You unwant her. You block her. You go away because she's being flirtatious, flirtatious for no reason. She's being manipulative because she, if she wants to be with you, she should have been. If she's there, then she has no business of continuing with you. So that's being sadistic. And she says... Um, After deleting a picture, Mary, she told me also that her marriage was planned to be at step one. And I'm very scared to face this day, or oh, September one, this day and that, and what feeling it will bring me living September one. You're just making something out of nothing. Life is not based on her ass. There are other things in this life, other people, other opportunity. Life is far bigger than someone's body. You like her? Fine. Now someone else, because she's decided to go somewhere else. And if she doesn't equally like you as you like her, then the hell with her. That's how you should think. At least that's what I think. And I always try to set myself free, but I can't. Yes, you can. The fact that you say you can't, she puts her in driver's seat. What? Your attention, your interest doesn't have to be hers because she doesn't deserve it. The only person that deserves it is the one that comes and brings it to you. Her body, her thinking, her attention, her desires, her affection. Then you will give it to them. If not, no. And if you don't have respect for yourself, nobody else will. So starts with you. I keep crying at the past three days. Well, that's your choice. Does it does it does it work any, anything? Does it does she come back when you cry? No. So why you cry? Just makes you weaker. And what she's going to wear, Jesus, what she's going to wear, who cares? And she told me, okay, you're now having obsessive compulsive disorder. You know that. Intrusive thoughts that you're allowing it to constantly come because you you think if you think to the end of it, imagine her what she's gonna wear, how she's gonna open her legs, how she's gonna sleep with her husband, and all that thing. You you think if you go all the way to the end, then these thoughts will end and that thing will not happen. No, just imagine her just wide open and she's getting rammed, and that's how it is gonna be. And get that out of your system and out of your intrusive thoughts. You don't have to make it. You already did it. And in that way, you'll be just, okay, all right, now what? Nothing happened. So what? I can go on with my business and she can have that. You're afraid of something that you shouldn't be afraid of. Nothing happens to you, whatever she does. It's your only thought that she has to be mine. Why? If she doesn't want to be with you, she doesn't deserve to be with you at all. As I said, have some respect for yourself. All right. And Marin, I swear I'm trying my best to move on. No, you're not. 
but her picture keeps coming into my mind. Jesus, you're more aggressive toward this woman than we boys are when a girlfriend leaves us. <laughs> what are you doing to yourself? <laughs> you know, <laughs> come on, <laughs> let her go. The hell with her. <laughs> she says her beauty devastates me. Come on, nobody's that beautiful. Her husband, her new life, everything about her trapped me, and she's they're they're living their life. Okay, so what? Doesn't she shit? Or is she a goddess of some kind? She's a human being. You just happen to like her. That's what makes her powerful. The her powers is in your desire. She's not powerful on her own. She hasn't accomplished anything in this life. She hasn't been able to cure a common cold. She hasn't been able to feed the elderly and protect the children. She hasn't been able to do anything great for this universe. Nothing. Her power is not on her merits or her accomplishments. Her power is rooted in your desire. The source of her power is you. Your attention, your desire is what gives her power. Take that away and understand you have respect for yourself and there's so much more out there and then you will see she's nothing but another human being. Got to get up, wash her face, go shit in the bathroom and do whatever it is that she has to do to survive. There's nothing so special about her. It's your desire that makes her so valuable. If you understand that, bring her down to a level that every human is and you'll see Nothing to die for. Move on. And you keep talking like that. I'm going to get on the plane and come and beat you on the head with the ugly stick. So, <laughs> all right. All right. That was the end of consultation with you. I can't spend the whole time with you. You can go make an appointment on uh, Skype um, for my, from my site. For a Skype consultation, we'll talk about it more. Uh, you guys know that I have a site. It's www.mindthatseekstruth.com. And if you need to talk to me about topics of thoughts, consciousness, fear, desire, ego, breakups, relationships, uh, intrusive thoughts, OCD, HOCD, and substance of OCD, you're welcome to go on my site, mindthatseekstruth.com. Make an appointment. And we'll explore and talk about your concerns one-on-one -on, -one on Skype. Okay. Andrej on says, hello, dear Mehran, 18 male Czechoslovak, Czech Republic. Ah, hello, Andre, I guess, yeah? Says, dear Mehran, why do I feel remorse and depress depression at 18 after my experience ended my first relationship i never seemed to find one like her. well you know you're 18 years old let's be realistic even though you're so young but you're a smart boy i'm sure everybody is imagine hmm? How is it possible that one girl that you met at age 18 be the best girl for you all throughout your life, even though at the ages that you haven't come to be and you don't know how you would be, what your standards would be, what your expectations of a woman would be, what kind of woman you would want later on? But you want to make that decision and you're making that decision as if this girl would have been the best all throughout your life, even though you haven't grown up to be, who the hell you're going to be? What's your taste going to be? What your expectations of a woman would be? What kind of woman you expect to be? You don't know any of that. You're 18 years old. You hardly know who the fuck you are. <laughs> Part of my French. Isn't that true? I mean, you and I, man to man, 18 years old. Do you know everything? If you do, that's the end of the life because where do you live then? Do you know everything? You don't. Still, I don't know everything. How can I? I'm 67 years old, but I still don't know everything. And I know that I don't know everything. And that's the beauty of it. That's the salvation. 
that's the way that it can help you to sort things out in life, knowing that you don't know everything. Which means you can't tell yourself that this girl that I was with at age 18 is the girl that I would always want her to be with me forever. It's impossible because you haven't fully grown mentally and physically even yet. How could you have known yourself completely as you would be years from now? You don't. So then how could you know what kind of a girl and if this girl would be the girl that you would want her years from now? You don't. So understand that this was a good tryout, good experience with a girl at age 18. It's beautiful. And at age 18, your hormones is to the roof. And you could really love a tree if you hug a tree. And you feel, oh, that's nice. That's how you are. It's not about, oh, what kind of tree it is. Uh, it's sust sustenance and it's nutritional values. You don't even care. Same thing with girls. You don't think what's in her mentality, her values, what's her goals are, what kind of, a, um, you know, attitude she has in life. But none of that. All it is, she's good looking. She turns me on. She's the best girl for me in life. That's how we thought at age 18. We thought that's all there is. You see a girl, you, you like her, you want her, you desire her. That means she's the best. Didn't care about her personality. Didn't care about her values. Nothing. Because we didn't know those things are important at all. Instinct. We are in our genetics. We are programmed for procreation. We see a woman, we want her. We don't ask any more questions. Who she is, where she comes from, what's her values, what her education, what's her goals. None of that. Nice legs, nice boobs, nice ass. She's pretty smile. She smiles at me. She wants me. That's the end of it. And that's the stage you are at. Don't be fooled by it. Enjoy it, but be thoughtful. Start having standards. What kind of girl she should be. But at this age, you can just, you know, have a lot of leeway and just enjoy yourself. But when she leaves or when they leave or when the breakup happens, when the relationship doesn't continue, don't be devastated. That's part of the whole life, part of the you learning process in life at this stage. This is supposed to happen. There is no way in hell that at 18 years old, you have capability and opportunity and, have, and you have seen enough girls to be able to choose the right one for you for life. Impossible. So this is the natural way things happen. You're with a girl for a bit in this age, and then you guys break up because both of you are still growing. You don't know really what the hell is going on. Today you like this one, tomorrow you like that one, and that's perfectly fine. You don't have to be so loyal at this moment to your imaginary girlfriend that you have made a princess out of her she's 18 years old she just finished wiping her ass knowing how to wipe her ass and tie her shoes so she's not a really full-fledged capable woman that you're making a wife out of her settle down and slap yourself and say wake up it's just big enough life and you had a good experience enjoy it and move on to the next that's all all right. And the Lugan is here. So, Salam Mehran, 26 May, London. Just moved to Japan. Oh, really? Oh, interesting. Oh, Genki desu ka? Genki desu? Watashi no nomai wa Mehran desu. Omeni kakarete ureshi desu. So, <laughs> go figure what I said. <laughs> <laughs> says I've met some beautiful girls but cannot seem to get anything going after coming from my recent breakup that's on you recent breakup forget it gone finish you in Japan somewhere else the hell with the old one gone doesn't exist you want to keep it alive in your mind virtually and no physical touch no physical interaction what are you torturing yourself the hell with it there's no sin if you let it go. You're not betraying your mental illusions. No, it's okay. It's not a sin. Let it go. That's the end of that. It says, is this normal? Yeah, it's not. No, it's normal, but you should get away with it. Just don't give so much value to what it was. The hell with it. Gone. Finish. Move on with. You're in Japan. You learn a lot. 
some people from different countries are there and then some Japanese girls and if you find a real nice Japanese girl it's going to be tough because you're in Japan they usually don't prefer but these days things have changed you may actually find a very nice Japanese girl who you will learn a lot they will really if they're still traditional a bit because I don't think they're that traditional as they used to be they're mostly Americanized Westernized and that kind of messed up their whole value system but if you find a real nice Japanese girl, uh, they're so feminine, so beautiful, so loving, so caring. They make you feel like a man that you are, and they're amazing. But then again, if they want to be Japanese or they want to mimic the Western girls, there's nothing wrong with the Western girls, but again, it's about the values, not about Western or Eastern. But in Western societies, most values have turned into bullshit feminism and all that and everything's gone to hellwire you know heck so you got to choose well regardless if you're in the east or west you got to find the values that it's in line with your values so be cool about it and move on and enjoy your opportunities and you're in good place and luca says hello luca 20 year old from serbia hello luca says i have realized that i miss my ex because she was a distraction from university and other obligations now that i'm single i notice myself clinging onto every other pretty girl how do i avoid this just you got to play a role even though you really are interested in them remember clinging is the way they will move away even if you want to cling just don't it's like you want to say something in the classroom and the teacher is talking and you're told, don't. You know, don't interrupt me when I'm talking. You know? So you really want to say, it, but just okay, I shouldn't, I shouldn't. So you want to cling to the girl because that's the need you have, but don't. Because if you do, she will not like you. No girl like a guy who clings to them. So have that, even though you want to cling with them, but play the role and not. Pretend you don't want to cling with them. Always tell yourself. And says, how do I avoid this? I just told you, this girl is the one. No, none of them is the one. And every one of them is, <laughs> depending on the future. So thoughts that I have about every other girl, how do I find peace with it? Don't. Just be cordial, be nice. Don't be clingy. And let's see how far it goes. If it went further, as long as it goes, you enjoy. It didn't. Next. It's not the end of the world if it doesn't work. And it's not everything you've been looking for if it works so treat it that way and also why do i feel this need for motherly love from other women well that's normal you're 20 years old so it's not a problem because we always love women and we need them and we want them to feel we want to feel that they could give us certain security by paying attention to us and praising us or putting some food in front of us it just makes us feel great because that's how our mothers really did when we were a kid and we find comfort in that so that's why we are gravitating toward the women today who are feminine and nurturing and they care about being concerned and considerate and these are the values that we like and make us feel good and make us feel that they love us and we like to be loved and so we find a place where we can unleash our love and attention and protection abilities and providing for them. That's what we like to do. But we also like to see them to care about us, about us and once in a while to pamper us, pay attention to us. Because we are also kids at heart, no matter how old we are. We, we don't mind that little pat on the back or put their head on our heads and feel like we're a good person. That is what we what we love women for because their values and their... Uh, attention and views about us is very important so when they break up with us we think that we are a bad person because we don't have that affirmation anymore not that they were the best one for us we just feel something has left us so we must not be as good as we think we are we are not affirmed as much so that these things play with our heads but when you realize that the qualities should be good enough before we actually commit ourselves to them and if they leave that's the end of their qualifying 
<laughs> not to continue and say, oh, I wish she hadn't left. No, she left That's the end of her qualifying. I know it's difficult, but you get over it. There's other women. There's no shortage of women in this world. Now there is because most of them are vaccinated. If you're not vaccinated, you're going to have a hard time finding one. But there's always hope. <laughs> And says, how do I find this uh, motherly love within myself so I can love a girl without needing her? Uh, you're 20 year old. So wait till you find the next one and the next one and the next one. Once you have few girls, then you'll learn that not every one of them is the last girl. There'll always be another one. So you won't be so needy and clingy because your neediness and clinginess is for the fear of losing it and not having it. So you want to attach yourself to it. You want to hold it up. The tighter you hold, the further they want to run away. So don't. And if they leave, after a few girlfriends, you realize, okay, so what? That's not the end of it. There's going to be another one. Right now, you're afraid that that's going to be the last one. That's why you're clinging so much. Don't. All right. Alex says, hey, sir. He says, no. Hey, mister. <laughs> Just want to give you my thanks for your videos on OCD. Really helped me feel better. Great. Delighted you shared with us, Alex. And thank you for that. Hang on one moment, guys. I'll give you a break. I'll check my email stuff, and I'll be right back. <laughs> All right, we're back. So, where were we? Um, Aman says, if you remember about that girl I told you about, are you still on her case? The friend zone one. I don't know. I feel like I'm still in her mind. Is it her that you think you're in her mind? Or is it that she's in your mind? And if she is, if you are in her mind, well, she would do something about it. Why do you keep interpreting what she's thinking? I want to ask her once more because we're in final year. I want to ask her once more through a friend common between us. I'm scared if I boost her ego. <laughs> well, we are men. You got to have the risk of boosting women's ego. Uh, and considering that you may be turned down, <laughs> so what? That's what we are. We are there to be rejected. And we're okay with that. 
that's what men are <laughs> so don't be afraid just don't waste your time right now make sure your exams are done first and you it's not going to interfere if she turns you down you're not going to be sad and sorry sad that oh i can't study now I'm, uh, i've been turned off don't that first do whatever you're supposed to accomplish and then when you say okay i'm fine now i don't have to study it's not going to interfere with my mind if she refuses or rejects me then okay go ahead or you think it'll be fine this find out how she feels not through another guy in other words don't tell your friend who's a guy to ask her to find out if she likes you or not find another girl that she's friend with and she's also friend with you ask her to find out if she likes you or whatever or just step forward and just say listen you know but every time you tell a young girl that you like them that's all they want they're waiting for for you to tell them you like them but then immediately they feel good and confident and they want to take that confidence and carry it with themselves to get other guys because they now got you and they're not interested in what they get because the confidence level is low at that age so it has to be mutual if you just want to force it on her they'll further go away from you because you say well he's so available he's not good enough for me because he really wants me they don't have enough confidence to appreciate the fact that you want them they think because you want them you're they're too good for you that's the way it looks in most cases so make your decision based on just tell her listen you know would you want to go out don't have to ask her do you like me sign here that you like me none of that shit. you don't need assurances just tell her, listen, you know, what do you feel if you just, you know, go out for dinner? You don't have to say this is a date or this. Just take her out for dinner and let it progress. Have fun with her. Don't try to, now that we are at dinner, do you want us to be together? Don't, don't do this shit. Just take her to dinner and have fun and take her home. Bye-bye. And then next time, maybe you like to go out again. Go for lunch or go for some activity don't again ask now that we've gone out two times do you want to be my girlfriend none of that shit keep on going eventually if it's meant to be if it works out she will show you and then if the occasion allows and you guys you know hold hands and stuff or and other things then you'll know that it's already together otherwise always wanting to be assured that i am yours you're mine that messes it messes them up and they say oh you know, he wants me too much i don't want him that's how they think so let it develop on its own rather than first asking do you want to be my girlfriend so we can go out no just ask her out if it feels right without any commitment and don't say oh you want to go out nothing for now it's not a serious thing just done nothing just say hey you want to go out and get something to eat? That's it. Don't explain why, what, no, what it means, none of that shit. All right. MD Samir Khan says, even I know a male, why HOCD feels real, it's like I'm proving myself to me. That's how it works. It's a mental glitch that it makes you doubt everything the french call it the doubting disease you doubt everything you doubt yourself you doubt your sexuality you doubt everything that's how it works it's got nothing to do with you nothing is changing in you and you know it your awareness is telling you you are who you are what your preferences are is as always been but something is interfering and that's the glitch that's the disorder not there is something wrong with you or something is changing you that's the disorder that's why ocd obsessive compulsive disorder hocd huh? inclination disorder but it's not you it's the signaling system 
So it's like I'm going crazy, false emotions. And yeah, it's, so as long as you understand that, then you shouldn't care. You should just try to educate yourself about what it is. And I have um, enough videos in here that you, you don't need me to talk about it now because there's enough elaborate videos on the subject that you can just go and click in HOCD in my search engine of my channel and you'll have hundreds of videos and you can use, you know, teachings of uh, Dr. Schwartz in the four steps and how to deal with intrusive thoughts and so on and uh, bring back the default setting of your brain and rewire the brain because this is just a malfunction in the signaling system of the brain. It's not about your sexuality. Okay, guys, uh, it's been one hour, 20 minutes, so we have uh, answered all questions nonstop. Actually, nonstop. Hmm. Too much yellow. There we go. There we go. That's the favorite spot. I love to be here. I love to live there. Ha <laughs> ha. Where's my yacht? Ah, there it is. <laughs> They've taken it for a spin without my knowledge. <laughs> All right. So, guys, it's time for me to say I love you all. Thank you very much for being here, giving me the opportunity to share a thing or two with you. I look forward to our next live stream. In the meantime, be good to yourself and to the others and promote the channel for heaven's sake. <laughs> I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Subscribe on my channel, visit my channel, and go through the videos that you might be interested in. Mindatseekstruth.com, making it one step away to talk to me one-on-one -on, -one on Skype and discuss what's concerning you. I'll talk to you soon. But we too, like the iceberg, have thousand times bigger powers that is not visible, and we must. Why? Is it something we're rambling on and I expect you to accept it? Or is there actually another power within us? Would you come and help me out? Okay. What I want you to do is put your hands underneath my arms uh -huh. and just lift me up. There we go, okay? Now, that's my physical part, right? Same thing, again, with that. Just want to see if there's any difference. Go ahead. Now, go ahead. Now, this, go ahead, when you're ready. Go ahead. So you see, this is different than what he was doing, and I'm not really doing anything. Doing anything. You're convinced? Yeah. So are you guys convinced that there is something other than, thank you. Yeah, thank right. you very much.